Hello everybody, this is Troy, and today I have a tip for you uh, to create looping uh, animations in Blender uh, using the procedural noise. And this is something that I actually struggled with for a while. Uh, I was very pleased when they added a fourth dimensional noise that allowed you to animate those parameters, but I soon found that I couldn't get it to return to uh, the same position to set up a looping animation. Now you can fit things in there and do rotation on mapping coordinates, uh, but it didn't quite phase quite the way I wanted to, uh, the same as just animating the W parameter. And I'll, I'll go into detail if you're not sure what I'm talking about here. But what I wanted to show you here is how to create a noise texture like I have here. On the left, I'm using a noise texture. and On the right, I'm using a Voronoi. Both of these are set to loop right now. Uh, in, my, in my node, I've got them set to loop at 50 frames. And so what you'll see is we've got these animations playing. If I go to frame zero, uh, just look at a few distinguishing features here, this here, this here, this here. And if I go to frame 50, since we're looping at 50 frames, it will be identical. And frame 100, again, identical. Uh, and so as I, as I go through those, you see those same, same features every 50 frames. Uh, and this was very important to me, and it was also important that this noise mostly held position and didn't and didn't just float through space, uh, moving up constantly as you would if you were animating the the mapping coordinates or the rotation where you you might get the noise to move strangely. Uh, so uh, I will go into detail. Uh, there's only about ten nodes that make up this effect, and this is a little bit of a mess, but we're going to build it here in this tutorial. So stick with me, and we'll get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit uh, new. We're going to start with a brand new scene. Save. Okay, and now we have a fresh uh, uh, look at Blender, and we're just going to change a few things uh, to make this a little easier. I'm going to go ahead and use the shading tab, and I'm going to change just a few things. I'm going to get rid of the texture view here. I'm going to add a timeline because I'm going to need to be scrubbing here, and uh, I'm just going to hide this background and uh, we'll hide these. So we just have our our object, our timeline, and our shader view. And uh, we're not really messing with materials much. We're just going to be doing the texture portion of this. Uh, so let's get rid of that. <clears throat> now, uh, let me go ahead and add a noise because we are going to be needing to uh, work on that. And if we take a look at that, it's a little soft. Uh, I'm going to change the scale uh, to be a little bit larger and then purely for the visuals of of this tutorial to make this a little easier to see we're going to put a, a greater than on here uh, just to be able to see the the shapes that are made up here now uh, we're going to be using this 4d noise <clears throat> which adds a new value in here before uh, i'll just set that uh, that adds this w here uh, before we had this W value, you would have to animate noise typically through the mapping nodes uh, where you would grab uh, some values here and you would you would move these and you would be able to get uh, a different effect uh, with your uh, with your noise moving that way. That way. But uh, I think this W works way better. It just doesn't have a way to actually loop. Um, so that's what we're going to get around here. Now, uh, I'm going to set up a few values that uh, are going to allow us to hook into this a little bit easier uh, down the road. So uh, I'm going to uh, name these. So this one I'm going to name uh, frame count. And uh, I'm going to call this one, uh, let's call this noise speed. <clears throat> and I'm going to need a, a loop counter. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to call this uh, uh, loop frames. And finally, I think I'll hook in the, the scale into here as well. So we'll create that uh, for scale. Uh, so uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a mess here as I as I noodle these in, but uh, hopefully this all this all works good. So the first thing to animate this W value, you can certainly keyframe it. But something that I like to do is just start with a basic expression. And uh, the one I'm going to use here is uh, pound side and frame. It's the simplest expression you can do in Blender. And it basically just turns purple to show that there's a driver on here. And 
whatever frame I go to is what it will is what it will be. So it's just an animated number that's based on the frame count, uh, which is perfect for what we're doing. So I'm going to tie that into our W, and we're going to see that our noise is now animated, although it is way too fast. It's not giving us any any effect that we want. Uh, so I need to slow that down, and generally you would slow that down. You can change this expression, so instead of frame, it's frame times 0 0.01 or something uh, that you want. But then you have to go into the expression every time to change it, and I want something a little more adjustable. So that's why I'm using this noise speed value, so I'm going to set that uh, to 0 0.01, and then I'm going to create a new node, and what this node is going to do is uh, we're going to multiply our frame number by 0 0.01 and so now when I hit play on that we've got a much uh, smoother moving noise pattern. Now uh, for the set sake of our loop let's just say we want to loop this on 50 frames. Now I'm going to set my my timeline to uh, 100 frames because I want to be able to see that we're going to loop this at one and then 50 should look the same and 100. So if I if I look at frame one uh, I get this. If I look at frame 50 we're further along frame 100. So all these are very different and when we hit 100 and come back around we will see a jump uh, right here now we're, we're going to see that. So let's get around that. So another node uh, that I'm going to need is this one and what we're going to use here is called modulo and if you're not familiar with what modulo does is it will basically repeat a number over and over again generally I've always used this from 0 to 1 uh, that it repeats but in this case what I want to do is I want to repeat our number of loop frames and so there's not really a good way to see this number although this is giving us a number that's looping every uh, our loop frames here is actually 50, not 0.5. Uh, our loop frames, uh, it's going to count to 50, and it's going to reset, and it's going to count to 50, and everything. So even though this is continually giving me a higher number, uh, 113, this would actually not be 113 because it resets every 50 frames down to down to one. And so instead of taking our frame count and putting it here, we're going to put our modulo up there. And so now what will happen is when we hit 50 you can see that right here it changes and what it changes to is the exact same thing that's on frame 0. So 0, 50, and 100 are now the same. So what we've achieved at this point is a sequence that repeats over and over again. Still doesn't loop seamlessly but this is the first step. Now I want to create an offset of the same animation where all of these exact frames are slid in time. And I'm going to do that by creating another node from this modulo. And instead of modulo on this one, I'm going to use uh, subtract. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output of this and I'm going to subtract our number of loop frames from that. So this, in this case, 50. This number is 50 less than this number always. So it's just 50 frames behind this one uh, as it proceeds through. Now, because I am going to have a number changing, I can't just feed my loop numbers into the W. What I need to do is create a second noise texture uh, to do this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this multiply and this noise texture and I'm going to copy them and I'm going to try to keep these nodes a little bit uh, clean although they generally do get pretty messy um, oops I meant to uh, create a line there there we go uh, I want to just create a node there and I'm just going to uh, break that off and bring that down so <clears throat> uh, we've got our same UV mapping for both of these this one uses for the multiply into the W, multiply into the W. We're taking our value from the top one and the noise speed on the bottom. So again, we're going to need the noise speed on the bottom and we're going to take this value and go to the top. So 
the difference between these two noise textures right now is they are offset by, in our case, 50 frames. Uh, that is the difference uh, between them. So I don't have a great way to show you that. Uh, uh, if I find here, uh, well, let me let me just proceed. Uh, this sequence will look identical uh, to the other one. If I hook it in here. Uh, you will see the same the same features popping up. They just happen at a different time in the timeline. What I need to be able to do is dissolve between these two over the course of our animation so that we end up uh, with a with a seamlessly moving uh, noise. And I'm going to do that by adding another node group. And this one, we're going to take our modulo frame. And we're going to actually divide it by our number of loop frames. And this is going to give us a number that goes from zero to one. Uh, if you think of our of our loop frames, fifty. Uh, so we're taking our modulo number, which goes from one to fifty, uh, and the, and then we're going to divide it by the number fifty. So uh, at the start, we're going to be at one fiftieth, then two fiftieth, three fiftieth, all the way up to fifty fiftieth, which should be one. So we're just going from zero to one. Now you can see the output of that uh, by just looking at it directly and you're going to see over our 50 frames we go from black to white and back up. Um, so if you ever want to do an animation of something uh, blinking, this is a good way to do it. You can simply add a color ramp and I will just go, I'll just uh, do this for example. and say I'd uh, that's at 50 if I change this to 10 now every 10 frames that blinks and you can actually get fancy with that you could add whatever you wanted in here uh, and you could you could do flashing colored police lights or different things like that uh, so it's very handy to do that but in this case throughout our loop count we're going 0 to 1 so what I want to do is uh, a color and we're going to mix and in this case we just want to mix uh, our two colors uh, or in this case I'll use factor from the noise factor and factor and we are going to mix it uh, with this that goes from 0 to 1 and we are feeding that out uh, to our uh, greater than and we should at this point frame 0 is this frame 50 should be identical frame 100 should be identical and if we play it we see our loop is perfectly seamless and so this is the extent of our material you can replace this with uh, Voronoi uh, simply just change out vector W and scale uh, we did not hook in our scale here um, what I would just do is is take the scale here and our scale uh, here then since we're changing on two textures if we just change that in one place um, it will change it will change for both of them uh, so I can change this like so so there you have it I hope these tips have been helpful and you now understand how you can create a looping noise background or a looping noise texture in blender uh, I've gone ahead and, and created mine into these little uh, node groups, which are great. So I can have a Voronoi one and a, and a regular noise one. Uh, so I don't have to worry with the jumble of nodes. I just, I just have the nice clean output of changing my noise speed, my frames uh, to which they loop, and then my noise scale. And then I can feed that through my other nodes and use it uh, in my animations. Uh, if you like this content, if there's something that's a subject you would like to see more information on, uh, let me know in comments and I will try to make more of these videos. Thank you.